If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode, for the first 25 minutes, me, Adam, and Justin have some fun conversation. We talk about it's always the fun. documentary about the Unabomber. It's not a documentary, but uh, it's, a sh- it's a show. It's about him mm. yeah. on Netflix called Manhunt. Uh, apparently he had Good one, old Ted Kaczynski. He had one eyebrow. Uh, then we talk about uh, intelligent lunatics and why people follow them. Isn't that frustrating yeah. that yeah. people do what these idiots Come on, say? man. Stop it. Uh, we talk about uh, the, uh, the experiments uh, on humans and our tendency to want to follow the crowd. There's some fascinating studies on this, and we have a nice conversation about it. And also, we're supposed to mention, mention our sponsor, Thrive Market. Doug, I know you just got your package from Thrive Market. What did you get, and did you get great prices? I did get great prices. Um, you know, I shop a lot at Whole Foods, Costco, and other places like that. The prices on Thrive Market are extremely competitive. In fact, well below what I'm paying at Whole Foods. For example, as you guys well know, I am a chocolate fan. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, they love that dark chocolate. <laughs> you yeah. always travel yeah. with the chocolate. Yeah. In particular, there's a brand called Alter Eco. Mm. Oh, I know that one. Yeah, it's fantastic. Great anyway, plan words. You know, you can get it on Thrive Market for well below what you pay for it at Whole Foods. Well, not only that, too. If they sign up, so if they go through us, right, Doug? They get the uh, they get the sixty dollars spread out over their first three spend. purchases, right? Twenty dollars off each of your first purchases of forty nine dollars, or which more. is a, a steal because it only costs sixty bucks for the whole year, right? So it's like Costco, where you pay a membership and then you're in the membership. Uh, for a year, right? That's how it works, and it's sixty bucks. So you're basically getting your right, and you also get your first month free for the membership. So you can try it out, and if you want to continue on, then you pay the well, full. Well, membership. that's that's what I was telling my clients. Like, I'm like, you know what? You already buy these products anyway because yeah. you're buying organic. You're buying, you know, non-GMO. Just go to Thrive Market, use the code, uh, you know, Mind Pump, and you'll and you can shop for free. For 30 days and get major discounts. The way Thrive Market works is because it's a membership process and because they eliminate a lot of the middlemen, you're basically going to pay this. Like if you were to buy cereal that's organic, you know you're going to spend probably a couple dollars more than if you were to buy non organic. They're so competitive that their prices of organic products are the same as you would pay for non organic product prices. Or lower. And how did he say he did that? He was talking about it's because it's it's almost like a uh, like a farmers market type of uh, yeah, like mentality, like but commune, put, yeah. yeah, right. Put but put on the web that so you're pretty much getting things for like what a wholesale price would be for yeah. those organic products. So the more people that get involved, you know, with Thrive Market, the better because you know that way everybody can kind of contribute to lowering the prices. Together. It's I think it's the it's a model of what f- the future of shopping very forward thinking is going to look like. And again, I can't even believe that i was almost when we interviewed the ceo uh i was shocked i wanted to ask him like how profitable are you because you guys your prices are super low Mm -hmm. how is that going to last i thought maybe it was a you know one of those like i would be i would be curious to see i don't know um i doubt they are very profitable right now because i think a lot i think they're on their fourth series of and, and don't quote me on this i can't i looked it up i can't remember where they're at right now but right now they're at a place where they definitely are pushing really hard to get out there, and I think they're giving way more. And I don't think they're right now. It's about just gaining, building the network. Well, I mean, yeah. so I think they're taking a hit right now to well, build. Whole Foods the, is a massive competitor. Yeah, because so, I, yeah. I know they got funding. I know they got good funding. Uh, like I said, I think they're on their third or their fourth series, and so I think they are in it right now. They are all about you know growing the network, and so. I think for the, right now, that's how they can do that. Is I don't think they're actually able to really. I don't think they're actually making money. I think they're counting on building the network because this is going to be the so, way everybody buys. So groceries. that's what I thought too. But when you're on this, when you're this far along, as big as they are with that, with that, those rounds of funding, they want to see profitability. I think they just. I think they've mastered efficiency. I think they've really mastered efficiency and lower. Mm. And we know how much that lowers prices. Walmart demonstrated that uh, you know years ago with efficiency. Thrive Market's doing it with organic products. So what you do is you go to thrivemarket.com, I believe forward slash mind pump, and then you'll get the the you know the the free you know uh, or the money towards your your products. You'll get the free shipping, and you'll get the thirty days for free. And then we get into the questions. The first question was, 
Uh, are there different ways to train the central nervous system and how does the central nervous system affect your health and gains? In this particular episode on that question, we do mention MAPS Prime. It's really the only program I know of that targets the central nervous system specifically. We're teaching you how to optimize that central nervous system for not just work, like before your workout, but also like after your workout. Right. right. You can find MAPS Prime at Mind Pump Media. Uh, dot com, and you can also get the Prime and Prime Pro bundle if you really want to take it uh, to the next level. The next question was, you know, if you're a personal trainer and you have a client who hasn't followed their workout nutrition for like a week or two, like, do you? How do you encourage them? Do you tell them they're wasting their time? Do you blast them? Do you train them differently? Do you meet them where they are? This is a great question. This was a learning curve for me mm -hmm. uh, as a personal trainer. It made a big difference in my success uh, as a trainer. Wisdom. Then we answer the question, what do we do for those nights when we just can't sleep? What is a sleep routine? How can you implement it to maximize your gains? And finally, the most important question of all, do we believe in aliens? Uh, <laughs> find out in this episode of Mind Pump. Yeah, we get out there. Da -na 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 -na. Hurry, 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 record, da -na 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 -na. Hit record. Da -na -na -na. Adam singing, you got to hit record. You got to catch it when it's happening. Physical. Physical. You guys missed it. I was just singing at the top of my lungs this <laughs> glorious sound. Oh, man. This glorious, glorious sound. Are my ears bleeding, Justin? Capture that. Do I have blood coming out of my ears? It was like, yeah. I, I can't do it when Doug's recording. I, like I could do it right now. Screaming right right ghost. I got a song for you fuckers. Boom. Get up, boy. Never meaning no harm. Yeah. Damn. All I think is Daisy Dukes when I hear that. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. What? A, yeah. What? A, did you guys watch On that show you. when you were kids? That no. That's the theme song from uh, what you call it, right? From the orange, the orange. Uh, yeah, the General Lee. Oh, the, come uh, on, you gotta yeah. let it figure it out. Oh man. Oh yeah, I would have never figured that out. Dukes of Hazard. Yeah, Dukes I don't Hazard. remember the name. What a great yeah. show. Did you guys watch that when you were no, kids? No, I didn't watch it at all. That I only me, I only watched the fuck it. Out of you. Oh, I, dude, they rallied those my cars. My dad watched that. Show. I only watched it for two reasons: Daisy Dukes yeah. and when they would jump the car. I always jumped That's the car. It, those two things. There was always a scene where they had to jump something with a car. Yeah, which which is completely false. Everybody knows if you jump your car I once, like you fucked the, it up. Smoking the Bandit better. Like, I never watched that. Oh, uh, all kinds of cool. Speaking things. of shows to watch, okay, you need to watch Chuck because I finally figured, one of our forum members I think reached out to me and told me what. It, what cause I remember, I couldn't find the name. The story of What's Chuck, Chuck? Weppner. Oh, yeah. Yeah. okay, right. It's, the it's Rocky just, guy. It's just called Chuck. Right? The Bayon Blue. Leader. Uh -huh. So you need to look that up. And right now, I am frying my brain on uh, the Unabomber story. So it is. Uh, it's not a documentary. By the way, we have a unilateral training mod available. <laughs> <laughs> you just reminded me. And it's the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, we're so good. Well, you set me up. <laughs> I feel like I feel like we're all geniuses together. Uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, what's yeah. is this good? Is this a good That's show? Blue dream for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, the, it's called um, uh, shit. Uh, fine. <laughs> fine. Uh, Ted Kaczynski is his that's name, Blue right? Dream that's for you. Blue Dream again. <laughs> Ted, Ted Kaczynski. Right? No, 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 no. No. Yeah, yeah, that's who it is. Yeah. Uh, it's the it's the Unabomber story, but the the name of the Netflix series is called uh, Finding a Man, uh, something like that. Finding a Man. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I'll look it up right now, though, to be sure. So, oh. all right. But all right. we'll wait. It yeah. is. Uh, no, we won't. No. We will. <laughs> it's called Manhunt. Yes, Manhunt. Oh, so Thank you. So I don't know how you do that, man. He's what? the Google Master, bro. You have like really fast thumbs. I was actually texting someone while I remembered that. <laughs> no, I'm just Shut kidding. I did, I did look it up. <laughs> um, I okay. I, I did not know uh, this much about him. So I, I I remember as a kid. There's a couple things I remember. I remember he's brilliant. I know that much. Right. Say so. This is how this played out for me. And and I want to hear what you how you what you guys know before Sal jumps in and wants to act all smart about it. I know yeah. nothing about it, by the way. Yeah. Oh, you don't. Childhood. No, I don't know. Anything oh, about then, then you're gonna love the shit of this because okay. this is what I knew, and I want to know if any of you knew more than me. So I knew. I know that he was by himself and he was a bomber. Yeah, yeah. I knew that he was by himself. Just based yeah. that awesome name. beard. He, he was he was a bomber. I knew that. So when I was a kid, I remember one or two. Major Major bombs that he had done that, and to the point where we had to shut, uh, we had to, we stopped all the planes at LAX one day. It was the great one of the craziest things that's ever happened. What did happened. he end up bombing? So listen, okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, so listen, I'm bad. My bad. It's coming. Yes. So that's kind of what I and I remember that, and then uh, I remember him. We caught him, and he was in jail, whatever. And then I remember like years later, being older, 
and reading books, listening to some like seminars and meeting, and actually hearing people quote him, like people quoting Ted Ted Kaczynski, and I'm like, wait a second. Uh, this guy, he, he was like really intelligent. Like I and they and so I was like, okay. And then I found out he was kind of a smart guy, but I didn't know. Yeah, that they so- portrayed him as this total like hillbilly. So yeah. this this is the extent that I know. This motherfucker for seventeen years was getting away with bombing people. Holy seventeen shit. years, and the whole time wow. he was. He was telling like a fucking story through his fucking killings through all he he, he was was he leaving clues oh for the cops God. and they couldn't they had the uh, everybody on it nobody could figure it, was it like out over everybody's head you Dude, know that's you a, need to listen to the, watch so that's it. that's it's a wow. big fucking that's great. a common trait amongst like he was so bored these psycho fuckers is that is that they actually they, they want, want to get caught well yeah. not that they want to get caught they want at some kind of recognition for what they did oh yeah 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 so like the Zodiac Killer you guys remember that yeah. Yeah. well you don't remember that but you've yeah. heard of him because that was like our parents generation he would like leave notes and tell them what he was going to do next and mm-hmm. you also notice uh, and this is a real statistic this is this is the strangeness of human psychology I love human psychology but it's also so weird when whenever we have a mass shooting that gets lots of publicity the odds of another one Those happening right after yeah. go through the roof yep. because they, they want that kind of that recognition is why they do it. If nobody said anything about these things, if someone did a bombing yeah. and nobody Infamy knew about it- is still fame. And ignored it, they would probably well, go they, down. Well, so, and they did a pretty good job because like I said, I, rem- I was 1995 to 90, well, 97 is when he went to jail. So the way the show is is told, it's pretty cool. It, they tell the story forward and backwards at the same time. You know, I like when they do that, where they, they j- jump back and forth. But what they do is they started at uh, 1995, which is the beginning of the guy who actually brought him down. And it was a two-year process before they before they brought him down. And so it, it jumps back and forth between 1995 and 97. Mm. But for the previous 17 years, this motherfucker was bombing people who? all over the country every, all the time. And it was all random, or who was he targeting? Super, super random. Wow. It, it, they, I thought they, he was targeting. Wasn't he an, like a self-proclaimed like anarchist? And yeah, I thought he was going after like, like the CIA or go, something. Go after like yeah. the, or the, you know. So the, the going after part was all part of the system and the message and everything that he was sending. Like the people that he used. Uh, I mean, sure, every person had some, but they could not put it together. Together. For 17 years, they couldn't put all That's the people so together. That's so crazy. 17 yeah. years. And it's all right out in front of you. And oh, it's like, dude, it's yeah. it's dope to watch the... I had had no, he stopped cool. like early, they probably so would have never it, caught him. I'm, 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 I'm looking up right now uh, for his manifesto. I want to read his manifesto now. Mm. Like, it's the story... You're going to get flagged. The oh, story... Man. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> you keep looking all the oh, shit no. up. <laughs> you go down the rabbit and hole. And I know there's some asshole that's listening right now, and they're just like, oh... Like, Adam you, Schaefer, so, the bearded You're burger. celebrating somebody who's uh, a... Brother. It's not about that. Well, I'll tell you something about you know, you know, uh, Charles Manson and some of those guys, like they had the most groupies, like, oh, yeah. like women, like it's such a weird thing because it's power. They're really drawn to that. Like yeah. he would get visited all the time. Well, H- his story's crazy. He, so he's, he's dude. Fuck no, that him, Hitler. Like there's, here's the thing I like to, okay. And this is the, it's, it's, it's almost like challenging my thought. I believe that, you know, a lot of times guys like us who are growth minded, we're constantly pushing ourselves to learn more. And with that, with, with growth comes power too, power over yourself, power potentially over others. And it's a natural thing, but not a lot of people talk about that. So I really Mm. like to see where that can go wrong Mm -hmm. because these, the men we're talking about right now did some really bad things and were, are bad guys about that, but they're all very intelligent people that at one point went that way, and what what caused that, and then also be aware what, of of what what some of the thing characteristics that could, could now do we that like in to, yourself, right? We, we like to focus on that. We like to focus on the lunatics, the crazy fuckers, the 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 tyrants, the dictators, and we like to think about how we can change that from happening. How could we? What went wrong with these people? But the reality is actually not that. The reality is, what is it in most people's psyche? Okay, because these lunatics are uh, one-offs. They're yeah. they're very they're rare. They're an exaggerated they're, version. They're quite rare. It's very rare that you find people like that. For most most people are relatively good people, right? Mm-hmm. Here's the real question: Is what is it in most of us that makes us want to follow people right. and makes us want to do crazy shit for yeah. them? Right. Like we talk about, like Hitler. You brought up Hitler. We talk about Hitler all the time and what a lunatic he was and. You know, I'm sure had we caught him, we would have executed him and he would have gone on trial, this and that. 
But nobody talks about all the people that did what he wanted. Right. All the people that followed orders. I am super fascinated by that. That's the part. I always think that's so interesting because we talk so bad. And everyone's like, if you say a name like Hitler now, people cringe. Oh, fuck it. Wait a second. There was thousands, tens of thousands of people, yeah. I don't, maybe even more. Was, was it really well, millions? Well, I how mean, how many did he have you that had, were actually he, following him? First of all, he he got elected uh, democratically. Of course, he wasn't doing what he was doing at that point, but uh, through a process of, and this may actually sound familiar uh, to people, um, through a process of scaring the country more and more, and them granting him through uh, their democratic process more and more power because he had to keep them safe. Mm-hmm. He was able to do all these different things. But then you have all these people working for him or under him that do what he told them to do. It's you know, it's the whole like, I'm just doing my job. You know, yeah. that whole thing? Like, well, I'm just doing my punch job. Punch in, punch out. You yeah. have free will. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If someone tells you to do some shit and it's immoral in your eyes... You have an obligation yeah. to say fuck you. You're I'm not still gonna, a human being. Yeah, like, I'm not going to. Which means, I'm not gonna which do that. means he did an unbelievable job of convincing yeah. people that his mission was pure, he, like uh, to, that, and good, or whatever. It, it's just strange. Or right. It's just strange to me how people do that because at literally tomorrow, if everybody everybody decided, I'm just not going to do what people tell me to do if I don't if I disagree yeah. with it. Then well, all, I think all there's a tipping point too. Just to be fair, you know, some people in desperate situations there where they corner them and they're gonna like kill their family, and you know what I mean. It's like at that point, it's like sure, yeah, and it's sure. like it's a country thing where like you have to kind of like put the uniform on and shit. Otherwise, you know, your sister. Well, gonna it's die. it's like that study that, and I think Sal's referenced this study before on the oh, show yeah. where you know, and I've watched it. I don't know if you've actually watched the study. I it's, sent you guys the video. It's, yeah, super fascinating where everybody will be sitting in a room, right, a doctor's office, and they tell that one of them's in on it, knows that, you know, you st- after the n- the girl comes out out from the uh, where the doctor would be and says who's the next patient, everybody stands up. And they did th- they did this test. Oh, no, it was a beep. Yeah, a beep. Oh, sorry. So right. they're in a waiting room. Uh, That's right, a beep happens. Yeah, they, this, the, by <laughs> well, the way. Well, what happens, it goes, it, it beeps, yeah. then the door opens, and then she asks for the next patient. Yeah. And so it trains this pattern of the beep happens, the door opens, everybody stands well, up. So, then, so they, that Pavlov's? Uh, well, no, no so there's different versions of that test that they've mm-hmm. repeated over and over again. So in that particular one, it's just the waiting room. There's uh, you know a couple people in there that don't know what's going on. Everyone else is an actor. A beep goes off. All, everybody stands up. All the actors stand up. And eventually, the people who don't know that they're in on an experiment stand up when it beeps. Right. Yeah. And then when they bring in a new person who also doesn't, doesn't know, know what's going on, they convince them to stand up. So the part- and everybody just stands up. But there's other te- other studies well, that they mimic show that. that. They show that. What's crazy is they show the evolution of it. Where so the five actors eventually leave. They eventually go to the doctor. Then they and go. It's all just and then at one point it's twelve people that don't none, know. None of them are actors. None of them know that what they're doing is absolutely ridiculous and silly. Oh, wow. And they're all getting up That's and down. Right. That's right. Yeah. In a matter of and what, it's crazy. Like, so in a matter of Happens minutes, really quickly, yeah. yeah, we we have now and it's most people. Most people will stand up because everybody else is standing yes, up. Yes, that's the stuff I never got. So I everybody, was never that guy. Well, everybody says that. I know. I yeah. Everybody says that now, until you're I, in the environment. Now I I think the same thing about myself. And my history tends to I think prove it because I tend to uh, I hate authority. I don't go against anybody. the grain. Yeah. But studies show that can, this room right here, most of us will probably end up doing it. That's just. The way the studies uh, show, and there's other tests. Well, how too. many there's- how many times have you done this? How yeah. many times? Because that's a little more glaring and obvious, right? How many times have you walked into a restaurant or a fast food place or somewhere you have to get in a line to go in, and somebody yeah. has started the line the wrong direction of it, and you just follow suit? Dude, yeah. I did that the other day. There was like this huge line for one register that was open, and there was a guy in a register right next to it with no line. Yeah. And I was just looking at like left, right, left, right, and then I just walked up to the guy with no line, yeah. and he's like, and he took my order, and I looked over, and I'm like, what the fuck are they waiting for? <laughs> I could not believe it. And then it was a huge line because they saw that it was no. And and then all of a sudden, everybody came behind me. Yeah, I was there, like, "Really?" There's another one that's really class, trippy. A classic one where they'll people will go in an elevator, but then when they walk in the elevator, everybody's facing like the right. So you know, normally people are facing the door. Everybody's facing to the right. So then the person goes in there, and inevitably they end up facing the same direction. Uh-huh. And then randomly, the uh, actors will face another direction, <laughs> and then the person will just follow them. Yeah, and it works again. For most people, it's a very it's, it's a very the group mind. Or dude, whatever. it is yeah. a scary trait. The yeah. the the one one experiment that really frightens me is where they have a person 
in a room uh, and they have an actor in another room and then they tell them, okay, every time they get a wrong question, you need to give them a shock. And I don't, and don't worry, one. this is part of it. Yeah, I remember that. And when they give them the shock, they hear screaming yeah. you know, next door. Yeah, <laughs> so, you hear pain. Somebody you, like in pain. You hear pain and then the, the fake sa- scientist or the actor or whatever tells you, Turn up the pain, turn up the power, turn up the power. Yeah. And people just do it because someone else is yeah. telling them. Even though they're reserved, some people had like this like moral compass there, like even like, oh, I don't know, but they would still do it. They would still and do you're it. Like, what? <laughs> they would still you just do it. said like how messed up it was to the guy and he still turned the knob. So, like the knob. What so the knowing these basic yeah. basic uh, you know, components of human nature, which yeah. which we know and we're just everyday guys with the internet access, okay? Imagine what uh, the researchers and scientists and leaders of major governments, our CIA, uh-huh. you know, the KGB when it existed, all these organizations. Imagine what they together talk about and do in order to manipulate uh, their population. You don't think like Coca Cola got a hold of that same, you know, case studies and all that and created marketing around it? Uh, I think uh, I think you would be. I think people would be shocked if they knew just how much. Some of these organizations have their hands in things like the media and in, in these stories where, I mean, we're seeing it, we see it all the time. You know, you look at, uh, you know, this whole thing with it, and we don't, I don't want to get into it uh, before I, before I begin, I don't want to get into it, but this whole thing with the NFL and everybody's like, oh, you know, they're disrespecting the soldiers. Nobody gives a shit about the soldiers when you've got fucking suicide rates that are through the roof. You've got people who can't get into the hospitals, the VA hospitals, getting no treatment. Mm-hmm. Where you know p- people are coming back with trauma from war. Nobody says anything, but all of a sudden, because we're told we're supposed to care this particular way, you are disrespecting these troops. Like nobody cares otherwise, and it's all again, it's all driven by this, uh, this, this whole these this, these powers, and I think in the media that make us. Tell us yeah, what we need to they're think. Trying to influence you. Yeah. It's it's fucking frightening to me. It's very very frightening, and it's uh, and I'm not. I don't. I know I'm not immune to it. Of course not. Well, it's frightening because we allow all of these people collectively collectively to get together yeah, and make they've decided it for us. Yeah, right. Vote yeah. and make decisions. If we were all in you know on our on our own figuring it out, so that I'd be less afraid. I'm more afraid because how easily people can be cattled or like sheep. It drives me crazy when I see. It's like you know again. And I know we're trying to stay off of this topic, but now you got <laughs> yeah, my brain yeah, going so. It's like the other day I saw LeBron talk about uh, talk about this topic, and it's just like, and I know I know how it gets gets down. I know the poor guy is being called by his PR, and they're like, "Listen, you're the face of the NBA. You need to come. You need to come out and say something. People want to know what LeBron James thinks about this whole incident. Here's here's a pair. Here's here's an idea of kind of what we want you to say. Figure this out. You know what I'm saying? This is how you need to come off. And then he goes, and then he just fucking is sounds horrible just bullshit like Mm. talking about a topic that i think he has no clue about getting out there and i know he's being told to say that and do that and to me i see that and i just shake my head because i'm like you know and i'm not saying that lebron doesn't do great things at all he could be doing all kinds of great donation things i'm just saying that i know that he didn't feel this like all of a sudden compassion to speak out on this topic. He's being told to speak out on that topic by somebody because of who he is in the NBA. And the NBA is like a sister or a cousin to the NFL and all these other powerhouses. I mean, these are all good old boy clubs that are billions of dollars that are getting distributed amongst these owners. And this they're meeting going like, oh, uh-oh, we got to fucking do something about this because we're getting ratings are going down. We're getting this from people and a shitstorm. And they start to gather up their most influential people and then tell them what to do meanwhile we're all on social media debating shit talking shit who's and the who's, real, ra- who's racist who's not ra- like we get all caught up in the fucking uh, yeah. all the bullshit shit storm and the it. real shit goes unnoticed right like the real right. stuff that we yeah. could actually like like again talking about our veterans you know th- have you guys seen the statistics on suicide rates among our vet it's yeah. it's hor- it's it's the leading cause of death yeah it's terrible and 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 but nobody really like we don't talk about it because why would they talk about that why would they you know what that would end up doing if we made a big deal about that and if the media really pumped that it would lower the amount of people that would enlist in the military and they don't want that shit right this whole this whole thing with the with the national anthem people don't know this in 2009 our government gave told the NFL we will give you money to make sure your players come out and stand for the national anthem because they know it's like propaganda it's to, it's to get people in and you know it doesn't matter where you stand on either side of this just realize that 
there's people from all ends fighting to manipulate and influence you for their own self-interest, their own benefit. You know, us being in fitness, you know, I can relate just being in fitness. All it took me, like I was in professional in fitness. This was my job for it's been up for over 20 years. It took me, I don't know, 16 years to figure out most of what I knew was bullshit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fucking 16. And I'm a, I consider myself a, a pretty smart, self-aware person, and I don't think I'm susceptible to a lot of different things. Yeah. 16. It took me a long fucking time oh, we to learn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Totally. That, that, and all the stuff that we taught, that was all bullshit. And it's just it's just part of the whole thing. Yeah. No, it is. It's and, uh, the, the sad part is the stuff that we're all getting upset about, debating about, arguing about on social media, all of a sudden we feel compelled to put posts about and talk about, like all that shit, like it's not even the real issue. Like that's not, <laughs> and if you know. really wanted to do something, like this isn't the time to do it. The time to do it was three months ago when nobody's talking about it and you make you you make a move to, 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 to help something or better a cause on your own, with your own money, your own fucking time or your own platform, not right now when it's turned into this you know, bullshit back and forth. Now it's like, it's so, it's so drama to me. And it's, and it's crazy to see people get all caught up in it. And that is scary to me. It is scary yeah. to me how easily we can be manipulated to, it's like, it's like a, it's like a magician trick and nobody knows. Oh, it. I always <laughs> think like, when stuff like this goes on, like there's some crazy, like nuclear threat somewhere that, or like some major massive, like, right. you know, movement that we're doing some, in some other country yeah. that like, they're just distracting us. Meanwhile, meanwhile, <laughs> I think meanwhile, it's got as big as it is all, all over probably one major reason, which is what, uh, 15 years or whatever it was 1980 something when Donald Trump and the NFL got into some lawsuit bullshit and Donald Trump loses. And guess what? We just had had some news which I posted about that the CTE situation which so all of a sudden ever, all eyes were on the NFL and Donald Trump comes out and says some shit and that was probably just a little fucking jab that was like fuck you you know what I'm oh, saying man. that's what that was so these guys are playing their own bullshit financial game talking shit to each other and we're all getting into a racial war like what yeah. the fuck like yes. this is a, it's about money and two big ass powerhouses fucking with each other and we're all over here getting pissed off over race the, and the, stuff. the worst the worst uh, fee of those in power is if people become united in, uh, in in good. If they can divide people, they can manipulate them. If they can't divide you, then they can't. It's very difficult to manipulate people who are divided against each other. Right. And so that's always the strategy. That's a divide and conquer. It's one of the most classic strategies of all time. Governments have been using it for ever, for as long as we, you know, for as long as history, we've seen. Uh, these strategies being employed. And, and it's, it's so funny that you say that because I know people right now are rolling their eyes like, oh, big bad government, or you're one of those guys who thinks the no. government's evil. It's like, well, when history has shown us all other governments use this strategy, why all of a sudden do we think that ours wouldn't? Yeah. <laughs> We're, ours is the only the one special one in all of history that doesn't use any of these manipulative tactics no. to, to get increased power. Well, no, I mean, and we, we have- you got to be naive to think do. that. Come on, we, we can just lose six point five trillion dollars. You know what I mean? <laughs> like we could just do that because we're the government, <laughs> and people don't know. Yeah. Where, like where like, to go? They're gonna just accept it. I don't know. Hey, yeah, look over yeah, here, yeah, NFL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Go Mars. It's, well, all, it's all imagined. We don't need it to equate yeah. to each other. It's all imagined, which is also how it's all, a magic trick, all, all off air. You know, those that don't know, because those that don't don't know, or if you listen for a long time, you know that Sal. Uh, loves to talk politics and we don't talk about talk on the show mm. and i don't uh i i think it's funny and i i call it sports for nerds oh, yeah. i call it sports for nerds yeah, this and, guy is like massive drama yeah because yeah. it reminds me the very the same way if you've ever li the, somebody who's familiar with both arenas really, really well gets what i'm saying those that don't those are that are in one and not the other may not understand it but if you are very familiar with like what diehard, really sports fanatic people sound like. They're very similar to <laughs> people talking about politics. Oh my God, yeah, yeah, the exact same way. And the the arguments yeah. are the same. It's because they're they're they have their tribes. It's like it's not. There's no. It's not two plus two equals four. And that's what we're debating. And you're trying to say it's six. Everybody has it's it's a character debate. This guy and, says it's six. This guy says it's seven. Yeah, <laughs> you're both wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It's four. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, and uh, and uh, studies also show that people in power, when they are in power, over time, their brain structure actually changes, and the way they think actually changes. So we know when people say power corrupts, 
It is totally true. Of course. It's absolutely true. It's a it's it's Well, this is what I meant. It's scary, man. That's why I meant this is also why I said I I I, I will. I'll definitely read the manifesto. I'll look into this. I love learning about these these crazies for those well, reasons. I think we should. We should, right? So we we can see like not repeat the same mistakes. Right. Again. That's I I believe like I said with with growth it will come power. It's just inevitable because the more power you have over yourself, it's inevitable that you'll have power over others too. And it, it sounds like it's not that I have power, I'll control them, but uh, mentally that I'm just, you're at another level than another person because they, they have, they haven't learned to process things the way you, you have thought outside of the box. Yeah. And yeah. so when you, when you learn to do that and you know, you are, then, then the other side comes with that. Okay. Then it becomes dangerous. You can become manipulative and you always got to watch for that. And I feel like uh, those guys that get to that level, they never did. They just got out of control mm. and they ran ran crazy with it. Doug, please bring the freedom bird. <laughs> the freedom <laughs> bring the freedom bird. <laughs> this quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. All right, our first question is from Alfie Fitness. Different ways to train the central nervous system and how it affects your overall health and gain. Oh, we haven't talked about uh, this in a little while. Yeah, you yeah. did a little post the other day, and I thought it you was- know it's funny. I was uh, in, I was just hanging, I was making dinner, and um, I thought you know I haven't done a post on the CNS in a little while, <laughs> and I just kind of willy, willy nilly. Is that is that even a real phrase? Willy I nilly? think it is. It's, it is. Huh? It's an old phrase. I like but, using the old yeah, phrases. What is willy it? nilly. What does willy nilly yeah. mean? What was he was a cowboy? Dude, gravy wasn't he? in the morning. No, willy nilly means kind of like nonchalant. Yeah. Like, eh, you know, I'm just going to do this real quick. And I did this post, and it resonated with a lot of people. Uh, and I think because people really still don't really consider the central nervous system when they're training, trying to get stronger, build muscle, burn body fat. And I know we've used this analogy many, many times before. I'll use it again because we, we do have new listeners all the time. But the central nervous system really is the amplifier to your speakers, your speakers being your muscles. It is that important when it comes to your performance, when it comes to movement, when it comes to your ability to contract uh, your muscles, build muscles, when it comes to your ability to stretch your muscles yeah. and to have mobility. All That's all central nervous system. And so if you don't consider your central nervous system and all you ever consider are your muscles, you're not missing out on half of the equation. You're missing out on probably a majority of the equation because if you target, if all you ever do is think about your muscles and you totally disregard the CNS – You'll you'll run into a lot of problems if all you ever do is consider your CNS. You're gonna probably take care of your muscles as well as well. That's how important it is. So, with the central nervous system, uh, every time you train intensely, every time you do anything, you impact your muscles, but you also impact your CNS. But there's kind of a caveat here: muscles don't really get impacted by anything else than when they're contracting and moving. The CNS gets impacted by everything else, mm -hmm. stress, sleep, stress, right. your thought, you know, what you're thinking, um, stimulants. You know, if you, if you give somebody, you know, you've heard police officers talking about how people on PCP are so strong mm -hmm. or, you know, studies will show that if you have caffeine, you'll have X amount percent, you know, better performance or better strength. You know why I love- It's all CNS. You yeah. know why I love yeah, exactly. your analogy and I've used it a million times now since you have because I think it's so good because I can think of- you can keep building upon that. It's a that. visual. Yeah, well, it really you works. can keep building on that visual. So when you think of an amplifier, an amplifier has, you know, you can get one of those amplifiers that has like 10 different knobs. Mm -hmm. You're adjusting all the, all of what you're putting out to these speakers. Yeah. And just like, and if you could think like speakers, you input into the speakers and that that's all you get. Contracting, contracting, yeah. that's all it does, yeah. right? There's nothing else that the, the muscle is really doing, right? So- but the central nervous system has this ability to send this way, send that way, send more this way. And so it's all these little knobs. Right. And think of those knobs like sleep, food, yeah. you know, uh, you know, what's your attitude, your, your attitude. Everything. yes, everything, yeah. right? All the, those knobs are all these other things. And the Re idea replace is replace that with treble, is bass, to get, is, you, you know, want all, all that, those yeah. knobs set perfectly, as close as you can to perfect to get the most output then your from those sounds speakers. Sounds gonna be way better. You yeah. uh, okay, so and this is uh, you know They've done studies on this, but athletes who train with weights over the years learn to call upon the central nervous system over that time much better than the average person, mm -hmm. even if they have the same amount of muscle. 
because you know muscle size does influence contraction, but your CNS is what gives you uh, that output and that power. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll give you another example that blew me away relatively recently. Actually, in fact, uh, this was I think during an episode we were recording maybe a year ago when this kind of dawned on me. But your ability to uh, have flexibility, your ability for your muscles to extend, yeah. is also largely con- con- controlled by your central nervous system. Because if I'm stretching over time, I'm not actually lengthening my muscles. My muscles don't lengthen. The attachments stay the same. But what I am doing is I'm teaching my central nervous system to allow me to move into these new ranges of motion. In fact, yeah. you'll see that within the first five minutes of stretching. If you if you add tension. So like, you know, that's why we're talking passive flexibility versus like mobility and why we're leaning so much more into, you know, mobility being such a a more valid option because now we're really we're teaching the central nervous system um, that we have ability to strengthen and support, uh, you know, the joint in this range. And so now we can actually extend that range um, by communicating that because really it's a communication, uh, you know, forces the communication through the cells. Another reason why I love this analogy so much is anybody who understands, you know, the value of the amplifier for the speakers realizes the the importance of the CNS to your overall health and gains. Like this question is like the question is how important is the CNS for our health and gains? It's the most and important. It is. It's that important because without that speaker, that amplifier ain't running. Right. Yeah, and, right. and actually the more you put in your, the more focus you start to put in getting a better amplifier, building a better amplifier, taking care of your amplifier, it's going to, your, your speakers are going to perform better than anything well, else. That's so, why, I mean, I'm, I'm so passionate about, CNS and training and because it's it's really like a newfound it's an old um, you know everybody knew about you know that that it was involved in strength training but it's it's almost like one of those things that hasn't really got a lot of real focus and attention and like it's not sexy optimize. yeah it's not sexy it's not tangible muscles but, we can touch we but see it literally we can look at. everything stems from that yeah well and, not not only that but I think uh, inadvertently on accident we've learned how to train the central nervous system just by observing. The effects on performance. Yeah. So we know things like rest. You know, we know that you know sleep and mm-hmm. you know meditation. Those types of things improve performance. But we don't. You know, we didn't really put two two together. At least people aren't really selling how important uh, the CNS is. But again, it's it's the most important. So I'll give you some other examples that'll kind of trip you out. So I use the stretching one. You can go try touching your toes. You'll go down so far. Stretch for five minutes. You'll go down further. Muscles haven't changed. That was your central nervous system. Right. You also possess way more strength uh, in your body than you're able to exert. Mm-hmm. That's the rev limiter on your central nervous system. Which people know the example of this, and they've I've seen cool like uh, Discovery Channel things where they break. Uh, you know when they do the moms lifting a car off the ba- off the baby yes, or yes. somebody it's running out superhero of superhero button. Yeah, somebody who's like crippled all of a sudden sprinting out of a house that's on fire. So right. you see these. That's that's your CNS, and it has that natural rev limiter. Well, and that's why you also get injured. You know, if that's, that's right. If you you exert yourself like that, it's it's literally it's it's that rev limiter is there to protect you from tearing muscles right off of your bones. But it's there, yeah. and if you learn how to call upon it and train it, um, then you're going to have you know much much better or performance. The, yeah, the max. Here's it. another one, right? Uh, you ever wonder why you're so lethargic and loose and feeling kind of like not super strong when you're really hot? It's a, it's a, it depresses the central nervous system. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a very important component, and it also is impacted by exercise like muscles, um, and it is impacted more than muscles when super high intensity is applied. So I love this question too because this also helps us explain again more of, you know, the science behind maps and why it's so unique and why we talk about uh, going two reps short of failure. This yeah. is this this is and where trigger that, sessions. Yes, and how you, this is you really where that this is where that science comes from. Is that that is what's really special about the program is we do put a lot of focus the way we design this, the CNS, we consider was, it very strongly. Yeah, we consider mm-hmm. the CNS more so, more so than almost any other program I know that I've ever seen out there. there I'm sure there's somebody else that understands. Well, We've would, met lots of smart guys that get that. It's not the first time. Right. I would say yeah. the kings of CNS understanding how to train the central nervous You're system. Power lifters. Olympic, well, power Olympic lifters. Yeah. Olympic, yeah. Lifters. Yeah. Olympic lifters. Olympic lifters. Lots of money has gone into investing 
how to learn how to train the body to maximize performance at, while keeping you at a particular body weight. Yeah. And if you look at the way Olympic lifters train, it's uh, sub-maximal loads. It's lots of pra- practice, lots of frequency. Nobody ever goes Extreme to failure. Extreme skill. And lots of skill, and they don't go to failure. Well, going to failure, de- yes, it definitely sends a, a muscle-building signal through the damage it causes to your muscle, but it also really hammers the central nervous system. Muscles recover typically faster than the CNS in those particular situations where now you've got muscles that are recovered, but your CNS is still dampened. You can't lift like you could before. You've missed that window of opportunity. And you know who hates to hear us say this is the big, huge, steroided out bodybuilder guy that's saying beast mode, no days off all the time. That's bullshit. I hammer the, f- I go to failure every time I train and some of that. And it's totally different because they are getting a signal, an artificial signal sent to their body to build muscle 24 7. And testosterone in particular does amp up the CNS. And this is one of the reasons why if you gave somebody a very fast-acting shot of testosterone, within a very short period of time, they would notice strength gains well before they built any muscle. Mm-hmm. There's that CNS uh, you know, stuff happening, right? So, so here's a couple things that you want to uh, do if you want to maximize CNS adaptation for gains. Uh, the types of training, first and foremost, variety is always important. So whatever you're doing now, changing it and staying within a new phase will always give you the best results. But... If we had to compare all of them, straight sets of the same exercise, big gross motor movements uh, is probably the best. So what I mean by that is if I'm going to hit my legs and I want to build strength and, and, and really maximize my CNS output for my quads and my hamstrings and my glutes, I'm probably going to be better off doing 10 sets of sub-maximal squats than I am doing three sets of squats, three sets of leg extensions, three sets of you know leg curls and doing all these other exercises. Uh, but if you combine the two, you get the best of both worlds. But we're, we're speaking just for CNS. Rest is very, very important, but not just rest where you sleep. There's also quality of sleep. And then there's also being able to manage your stress because anytime you, even if you just sit there and you're resting, you're not exerting yourself, yeah. if you're racing in your mind with you know stressful situations or repetitive, obsessive Shallow thoughts, breaths, you, all stuff. your CNS will get uh, very fatigued. Um, so those are the things you want to look at. Uh, supplements that help the CNS. There are supplements that help you amp up the CNS. These are stimulants like caffeine. But if you abuse them, you will get a, an adaptive effect where the CNS depresses itself so that when you take the caffeine, now you're at baseline. So be careful with that. I personally like recommending supplements that help replenish the central nervous system. And these tend to be supplements in the ad- adaptogen uh, category of supplements. Things like ashwagandha, raishi, chaga, uh, ulithro root, which is a type of, uh, they call it Siberian ginseng, even Panax ginseng, which is also an adaptogen, but is slightly stimulatory, you know, that can help as well. Um, have you, and th- have you been able to see, have you shopped all that stuff on Thrive yet? Have you used Thrive for those things? I use Thrive mainly for all of my, uh, for Thrive Market, more, mainly for my food products. Mm-hmm. So like ghee, coconut oil, yeah. uh, uh, snacks for the, the kids. Yeah, all that stuff. So. so you're you're also forgetting about something with the the CNS that you know I think is talking about gains, uh, and also why we wrote Maps Prime uh, was you know teaching you Prime how, is Prime is all about the CNS. Yeah, man. that's yeah. A, that's a, that's totally what that program was about was teaching people how to maximize it per workout, and that's to say, let's say you're not even following Maps, you have your own program. It's like whatever. This is to teach people like that that listen. Before you go into workout, assess your body, and there's a compass that comes in there, kind of tells you areas you need to focus, and then we teach you how to prime it, prime the areas that for your body mm-hmm. that's going to get the most out of your current workout. I've got a great analogy. Uh, hopefully, I don't do it Justin with this, but <laughs> <laughs> the ramp, if we're gonna, ramp on. and water this no, shit. Come if on, man. Yeah, throw a monkey in that wrench. Yeah, so if we're, <laughs> people forgot about that one already. If we're sticking to the speaker and amplifier analogy. Let's say your goal for your workout, uh, your goal for your workout is to get the most bang for your buck, right? Build the most muscle, burn the most body fat. So if we're, if we're using the analogy of speakers, your goal would be to get the best sound, okay? Do you just walk up to a stereo system without checking the equalizer, oh, great, without great checking, analogy. and just turn it on full blast? Mm. No, you would you would get better sound if you went over to it, started, tweaking started all listening knobs. a little bit, tweaking things, mm. tweaking things, and then turning it up, and boom, perfect sound. That's what priming your workouts does. Yeah. Is it's tw- it's it's getting that equalizer and that amplifier mm. perfect, so that when you turn those speakers on, 
The sound is beautiful. Good job with the analogy. Oh, uh, I like it. Blue dream. I mean, <laughs> ramp water. Yeah, can't really compare. All right. Our next question is from Greg Kellen, PT. What do you say to clients when they haven't followed their workout and nutrition plan for a week? Do you tell them off or you try? do you try to be encouraging? <laughs> You're stupid. If, you'll never make it. <laughs> yeah. When a client has not seen results because of the lack of eff- effort on their part, when do you tell them that they are wasting your time who, and theirs? Who do you think is most likely to tell a client off? Uh, I think at one point, all of us. Uh, no, I yeah. think I actually think you. Me? Yeah. Yeah, I, I did. I used to. I I, I, you've told stories. Or I'm, I was surprisingly, for what an asshole and straightforward I am, everyone, everyone uh, I don't think I did this a lot at all. I Even re- in the beginning? I used to. So what I when I had clients that frustrated me, uh, This and this is just, this is me, right? Like, uh, as much as it ate, ate inside of me, like I just did. I had a client that I could not stand training for eight fucking years, mm-hmm. and and I did not need the money. I could have totally had someone fill her slot, but I always like to take that on as a challenge. As a trainer, I prided myself on being a chameleon and being able to mold my personality around theirs. And sometimes they're lazy, sometimes they're liars, sometimes they're they they're dialed in, sometimes they're wishy washy. Some and I had them all right. I've trained them all, and I would always. Tra- I was tra- training myself while I'm training them to be a better trainer because in reality, I'm going to see 10 more cases of this down the road. So I don't, I never told a client off. So I as direct as I talk and th- and I would be direct. There's a difference between being direct and telling them straight up about things, but I would also, I would never tell a client off. So yeah, no. <laughs> I had clients that would ignore a lot of the, you know, nutrition advice and then they would keep bringing up issues they'd have. And then I would just reference Exactly what I said, you know, again, I'm like, and, and then we go back and see like what they actually changed. They didn't change anything, but they didn't care enough to change it. So, you know, for me, I, I just have a hard time like hammering that person like over and over and over again about it. Like they, they literally need to decide themselves. Right. And I would just reiterate that like in a, in a nice way. And then they'd either take it like, you know, take offense to it or they would actually change something about so it. So I have, I have a story bef- interrupt you here, Sal, because I had a client that I just saw this morning. It's kind of funny we're talking about this. I haven't seen her in a long time, and she's uh, a, she was with me for years and years and years, and occasionally when she's got major issues, like she's had knee surgery, hip surgery, back issues, she's got all this stuff, um, you know, she'll call me up and, you know, to kind of take a look at her and maybe do to give her a couple movements that she can do, and so we occasionally do this. And one of the things I know about her, I was I used to train her consistently, is a lot of the stuff she will not do unless I am there and and making her do it. And otherwise, she never puts in the work that she needs to. And we kind of had to have this conversation today that, you know, she'd been reaching out, reaching out, wanting to get in my schedule. And I've just been so busy. I'm like, you know, I, I want to I just don't have time. And then she did. And I, I helped her out with the things. And I said, but listen, none of this like. I don't even want you to come see me because I'm a waste of your money until you apply these things that I'm giving you. Now, if you just want to give me money and see me every once in a while and then me tell you some things that could help you and then you kind of do them or don't do them and then you go off, then that's fine. But just know what you're signing up for. If you really want me to help you, you really want to get rid of this pain, you really want to feel better, these are the things you got to do and this is how often you have to do them. And so those are the type of conversations that I have with clients like this. You just got to give them better perspective. A lot of them have this distorted idea of what uh, what getting in shape is like or losing those 50, last 15 pounds is going to be like and what they're actually really doing. You got to help. You have to you have to help give them that perspective and saying, listen, if you're OK with having pain and bitching about it and taking drugs every once in a while to make them feel better and that and you're OK with that, then we keep up with this pattern that we have going on right now where I ask you what you ate. You forget because you didn't track it or you're not eating right or another night we made three days in a row and then you had this like. I'm okay with that. I can still help you. I can still teach you exercises and movements. I can still make your life better and enhance it. But if you want to make change and you want to you want to get better, like leaner or more muscle, you want to make progress, then we have to break some of these habits. Yeah, eventually you have to like have a serious conversation. You know, like like we all got to a position where we didn't feel right like taking the money because then it's like 
it's it's a reflection of also you know you as a trainer and you're coaching with them and so I'd always like I got it to a point and I loved I loved this client to death but I mean he would wear my shirt you know and he'd wear my shirt and like he he wouldn't do what I tell him to do anymore he'd mess around like as he'd come in you know he wouldn't eat right and I'm just like you know like you, you can't like rep me and then um, not listen to anything I say. Yeah. Well, I, I I learned my lesson uh, really strongly with this particular situation. I, I had a client, and I had uh, and I've only done this a few times in my career, but I sat down with her and really called her out, and she left and never came back. And uh, it was a, a learning lesson for me because I I realized like what am I what am I really trying to get done here? Like, right? Are I, you are you really helping? Yeah, her? my goal is to make this help this person improve their health and wellness in some way. Now, this person was seeing me between one to two days a week. Otherwise, she did zero activity and she ate terribly. Now, what if she had continued continued to see me one or two days a week, but continued doing the other stuff, you know, that, like I said, not exercising and eating horribly? She's better off than she was before. Mm -hmm. She's still better off. Now, because I sat down and told her, you're wasting my time, you're not doing what I'm telling you, and you know you need to put more effort into this. Now she left and she's not doing any of it. Yeah, I have not helped her yeah. uh, at all. And so now that's a double edged sword. And I right? learned I learned my lesson with this because uh, I did her a disservice, and I was I had lost my integrity in the sense that um, I this wasn't about her. This wasn't about my clients. It was about me. I'm taking it personally because it hurts my ego because you're not doing what I tell you and I'm getting offended by it. Mm -hmm. The reality is if you're a really good trainer, you need to meet your client where they are at. Right. Meet they meet these people where they're at and it, that might just be That's a great point. at a very 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 surface level and that's okay. Right. It's yeah. not I, it's not it's not your goal, goals for her. It's right. her goals or that's it's his it. goal. You know what and I'm saying? Don't so, take yeah, we always get wrapped up in that cuz we feel so much pride, you know, and like and we're that's trying it. to and, serve and don't identify provide, yeah. and don't identify with it. It's 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 them. It's not you know, don't make it about you, but yeah. you know, I, when that's I, why you got to help that why I said you got to you got to help them gain perspective because yep. most of yeah. the time they just don't have the right perspective. They don't understand. They don't really Realize what they're doing is giving mm -hmm. them the results they currently have. Yeah, you're you're when they when they look at you frustrated because they're not waiting. It's like no, you look and feel the way you feel because that's the results you get for what you've done so far. You just explain it to them, that, and yeah. you need to help them make that connection. Now, if you want more, or you want these are the steps that we need to take to get there. And I'm not going to tell you you have to. Like this is your life, this is your body. Mm -hmm. I'm I've had clients that I trained for years. Mm -hmm. That was completely complacent with being 30 pounds overweight and never and, and didn't lose it. Yeah, yeah, never lost it because you know what? They came to see me because I helped them move better and I burned the, the calorie, extra calories that kept them from blowing up and getting even bigger. And as much as I thought they should lose 30 pounds and change some of their eating patterns and do other things like that, it's not what made them happy. No, and and you, I was that was not what I was there for. And you still added value right. uh, to their lives. I mean, when I learned this. At, up until this point, the average client would stay with me for like a year or two, which is still much higher than the industry standard. But when I finally figured this part out where I really had to meet my clients where they were, at this point, uh, after that, clients would stay with me for 10 or more right. years. And yep. I haven't trained any clients for That's two old tra trainer wisdom. It is. You know, because like new young trainers coming in and like anybody, like you're filled with so much passion to change people's lives. Right. And like You want to motivate everybody. Yeah, get things. And, and like, and that's where, you know, all that coming from. It's like you, you had all this pride going into it and like, you know, they're representing me and like, ah, uh, th but think about that statement. It's all me. Well, look, I, I, I said this on the Pursuit podcast yeah. the other day. Um, people don't realize that. You know, literally less than 20% of our clients actually reach their ultimate goal of fitness. Long term. Long term. Yeah. So if that's true, and I'm, I like to think I'm pretty good at what I do, that means 80% are failing. So most are going to fail. So mm -hmm. what can I provide for these people that are inevitably probably going to fail at their ultimate fitness goal? Yeah. I, need to not, I need to not get hung up on, oh, this person could be here, could be there. It's like- hey, You still have influence because you're constantly talking to them. Right. Yeah. And so you, you like I love that, I think what Sal said was such a great statement was that you, you meet them where they are. 
are, you know, mm-hmm. and may, they are just not there yet where they're willing to put the thing, do the things they need to do to get to the next level. And they need to be OK with that because you're not a magician. Yeah. You're not somebody who's going to, like, do something magical in a session or tell them some all of a sudden game changing thing that's going to change all of a sudden change. all this. They have to change well, patterns and habits. I'll tell you have. what, I haven't trained clients now in uh, over a year and a half or whatever since we've been doing, you know, Mind Pump. We went full time. And all my old clients still working out and they're still doing it. And these are all people that were yeah. never into exercise, none of that. And it's because I trained them and I got them past that three year, four year, five year mark. They're with me for 10 years. And now they've made lifestyle, actual real lifestyle changes. I ha- I've had clients who were, came to me because they wanted to lose 30 pounds. They didn't lose 30 pounds until like three years later. And it, on their own. It's like it finally clicked, everything we've been talking about, and I'm not hammering them. I'm meeting where they're at. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, three years later, 30 pounds gone, and then for the next six years, yeah, you never know it stays when it's off. Click. That's yeah, it. Yeah, it totally yeah, will you have happen. The, the, the analogy of the lady I'm talking about right now, I've been telling her the same things for a very long time, and I, ve- I got to her today, and I was just like, listen, like here's the, I'm going to give you, and I, I picked just five movements. Like Here's the deal. She, she's she got Prime Pro, right? And she... Uh, all of the Prime Pro exercises she needs to be doing. Yeah. But I know how daunting that is for her to do and sit down and do these repatterning movements for five minutes and ask her to do 15 different exercises. every. So what I did was I said, listen, I'm going to pick the five most impactful ones I think will alleviate the issues that you have going on. You need to do all of them. We can. Do, that's the goal yeah. <laughs> is to get there. But we're going to start here. I'm going to take you through them to show you the intent that I want you to do them with. And then after that, I don't want you to see me for a couple of weeks. And then when I'm going to see you, I'm going to know if you're doing those things. And if you are, I can progress you. If you're not, then I'm, there's no reason for you to even see me because there's still you still need to do that. And so you just got to have that kind of attitude. And I think over time you you'll get that confidence uh, of what you can provide and do for them and you'll be you'll learn how to explain it better mm-hmm. and i think that's really what it is it's, you're you're always trying to give them a better perception of what that what they're doing and what it's adding up to and what you can do for them and what you can't do for them and what they need to do together right next up is sweeter v what do you do for those nights when you just can't sleep how does this affect your training the following day Mm. Um, so I've never really had issues with, uh, going to sleep. My issue was always like, okay, now it's time to go to sleep. So I, if I get stuck on something or I start reading, then, um, I can stay up all night long. And I used to really get away with being able to do this. And as I've gotten older, maybe I'm just more aware of how much it truly impacts me the following day. You know, there's, it will impact you directly right away. Like if you have a shitty night of sleep, even if you think you feel awesome, you drink lots of coffee, um, there are real measurable effects it has on the body. Sleep is one of the top most important things uh, that you should look at when it comes to not just muscle building and fat loss, but just overall health. Now, for one thing that I've started implementing, uh, and I started doing this, I don't know, maybe six months ago or so, and I recommend this to all my clients, is uh, a sleep routine. And what I do is, is I tell all my clients one hour before going to bed. So if you know you need to go to bed at 10, at 9, turn all your electronics off. And if you can, dim all your lights or turn off your lights and go by candlelight. And we know that this has a positive effect on sleep quality uh, through study. It does, if you have electronics on right up into the minute you go to sleep, it affects things like melatonin production while you're sleeping. And the stages of sleep change a little bit versus having that sleep routine. I also recommend that people take either a cold shower, believe it or not, a cold shower an hour before bed. It will get you to sleep faster. Oh, really? Yeah. I know you would think it's the opposite. Stimulates, yeah. You would think it's the opposite, but uh, cooling a, a cool body makes you sleep better than being hot. This is why they say sleep naked in a very cold well, in a cool room. I know for sure that's true yeah, I do yeah. like being I like it freezing cold yeah. in my room yeah so I've actually messed around with this and it's true you don't want to do it right before bed but like an hour before bed I'm going to hold um, them to that when we go on these trips you could do that oh my god we're going to be up in, <laughs> I, you know I how know. cold the water is going to be up in I'll try it dude I'm, try, yeah, I'm always looking turn the AC on 
I'll, I'm always looking for more hacks in this arena. Here's the deal. Uh, what do you? What are these nights that you do? You just can't sleep. Yeah, you you have probably the worst. Well, I mean, right? now, here's how I feel though. Uh, what do I do on these nights now, or what would I do? Uh, I would punch myself in the dick because I feel like I've hacked this already, and if I'm having this issue, that means hmm. I didn't do what I know what I'm supposed to do. So I I've definitely. This was an issue for me. This is something, and I still do, but if I do, it's because I know what I did. Like, it's no longer like I used to have these sleepless nights and I wouldn't know why. Where now, if I have a sleepless night or I toss and turn at night, oh, I know exactly why. And it's my own fault. Mm. You know, so now I, like I said, you didn't that, go through the process. that's what I meant by I punched myself. I wouldn't literally mm. punch myself in the dick, but it, for me, that's like, hey, I get that's what you get. You know what I'm saying? You know better. You should, you got to do these things. What do you do? What have you been doing? So, the electronic, the electronic, the electronic, the electronic thing. The, uh, thing. <laughs> the, <electronical. laughs> the uh, turning off the electronics ha- was the uh, the biggest thing for me. So that if I get it off by seven o'clock, so that's the goal always. And I'll tell you, uh, it's it's hard to have stayed consistent. I've been saying this now. If you've been listening to the podcast for a long time, I've been talking about this for quite some time. I definitely, and I know I've been called out. I know fucking Ron calls me out all the time. He sees me on the forum. He's like, hey, what happened to your uh, 7 o'clock curfew? Yeah. I'm like, fuck you. I'm, I'm in my private forum. I didn't get on here all day, and I'm trying to spend some time in our community, and I'm doing a solid for the team, and you fucking call me out on my fucking 7 o'clock. But yeah, that happens. Catch you slipping. Sometimes I, I don't get a chance to get in the forum, and we all make a conscious effort to be in there as, as much as we can answering questions, right? So uh, I, it's a hard habit. It's hard for me to train myself. And really, I allow myself the freedom on Saturday and Sunday. It's Monday through Friday, I tell myself, shut that fucker off at seven o'clock. If I get the, if I stay away from my phone yeah. from seven o'clock, and then if I really want to sleep like a baby, I do the the candle lights and then turn the lights up. Oh, but man. sometimes, you know, Katrina's in the kitchen and doing things, and I don't, I can't expect the house. Dude, to I have be. to stop my caffeine consumption like before oh. four. Oh, that's a no brainer. Yeah, it's, it's usually yeah. no brainer. It's like I say that, but like it's such a. Um, like if I'm working on something on the computer, I'll catch myself getting, uh, I don't even look at the clock or what time it is. Oh, you, know? you don't? No. Oh, it, after lunch, it yeah. is a habit of mine. And then that I'll I'm make that mistake. Oh my God. And then that will totally affect me that night. And then my brain will spin all night. And yeah, it does affect my workouts, you know, the following day. If I don't get that kind of like quality sleep that we just, we feel and it, it, it charges you, it, it, it really helps you to recover. It's just like carrying that, it, like if it's not going to affect that workout, it's going to affect the one after that, you know, then it's like this snowballing sort of effect. So um, it's, dude, sleep is very important. Yeah. Uh, Brain FM has been the other big one for me. Do you use that nightly or only when you feel no, like no, you no, need no. it? Exactly. So I believe that I don't think as much as I promote Brain FM. You don't want to abuse it. it. Well, yeah, because then we're, I mean, we talk about all the time. Our bodies are adaptation machines. So my body, have I don't. You, have you lowered your consumption of cannabis too? Like alternated that? Um, no, I have a very uh, consistent uh, intake of cannabis, and also like I come off. Like so, if I've been, if I find myself where it's been like four weeks where I've been consistently smoking every single night, I'll take a, uh, I'll take a day or two off for sure. If I feel like I've stretched that even longer, then I'll add even day more days off. Too much of that, and I can't sleep, man. Too much cannabis, and I am up. Oh yeah, all I, night. I only can do a couple hits. If I do, I'm literally, I take two puffs. I smoke from a joint, which is not ideal, and I know that I should vaporize and blah, blah, blah. But I have literally two puffs off a joint, and that's it. And it's just enough to settle me down, put me to sleep. And otherwise, if I have four or five, I'll get all wired. Mm-hmm. I get all wired and chatty, and I want to. Stand yeah, I up. get I get too hyper. I'm not, yeah, I'm not trying to get you know loaded the, right uh, before bed. There's a there's a very very strong psychological component uh, that contributes to sleep as well. So, uh, and it's it sounds it sounds like this wouldn't be true, but it is. The more nights you can string together of good sleep, the more likely you are to have good sleep because you've become you're 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 less stressed out about not getting good sleep. So. Part of the reason why the sleep routine works also is because it's a routine. You're setting yourself up. You're relaxing. It worked last time. It's going to work again. And that there's that psychological component of, oh, okay, I think this is going to work again. And then sure enough, it does. Using uh, substances or products like Brain FM all the time can also do the same thing, meaning yeah, when, I, to have them. when I don't have it, right, right. Maybe, maybe my body's fine without it, but now I feel like I need it. Right. And mm-hmm. I have to have it, and that can influence me. So there's a huge psychological component here. Totally. The other thing that I recommend to people is to do a, a, a mindfulness practice 
before bed. One of the easiest things you can do is just belly breathe right there in bed. Lay on your back, breathe into your belly, have your mm-hmm. belly rise, hold you know hold your hold it a little bit, breathe out, uh, you know hold that a little bit, and just do that back and forth and 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 relax um, and relax your entire body. Yeah, and you'll see how much better you feel. And the um, the whole slow walking thing. Like oh, Courtney, slow walk meditation. Yeah, Courtney and I have been doing that, and that's that's really helped a lot. You guys, you guys actually do that together. We do it together since I so dark, dude. I can't admit that. I would love to see that. I tried to get her on the Wim Hof. We'd love to be like because Wim Hof breathing with me, but she's just she's not she's not like in it like. Because I, I I do my I still do my barefoot walking when we walk the dogs and Katrina doesn't normally do it uh, but yeah. she'll walk with me but <laughs> it would be pretty funny to do the she would, she super would, she'd be pissed if I <laughs> she knew I said that like, yeah. yeah she she cares about being cool more than me you know what I mean <laughs> like you think I care about that uh, camel milk tea that's another one too camel milk tea you can use uh, regularly um, and it helps night. settle you I down I love camel milk tea mm-hmm. all right our next question is from Garrett Morelles. Do you guys believe in aliens? <laughs> <laughs> Who picked this one? <laughs> Dude, this is, this I did. He thought solid. it was me. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's funny? So I was watching um, Into the Cosmos with uh, Neil. Oh, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah, and smart. The very Human first, being. the very first episode of it, he's talking about the vastness uh, and this of the of the universe, how big it is, and how big the observable universe is, and how that's probably a part of what they call a multiverse. And the vastness of the size of the universe is so incomprehensible. I was literally watching it and almost getting emotional at oh, how... It makes me weird. Yeah. I get weirded out when I watch it's it. It's just like so crazy at it's how... It's like your brain can't fathom that much it's space. Just too, yeah, string theory on top of that. It's so big. that you, like you travel as fast as the universe allows you to travel. You'll never reach... Outside of the, uh, you know, outside of our own solar system in your lifetime, let alone, you know, out of the, out of our galaxy or, or at the edge of the universe. So, yeah. with if in fact life is what we think it is, is as we experience it, this organic life that evolved on a planet or whatever, the odds that life don't ex- life doesn't exist somewhere else in this incredibly immense and unfathomably old universe is incomprehensibly small. There's a lot of big words there. Yeah. <laughs> of course life exists somewhere else out there. I think the real question is what Where, would that look like? Yeah, what, look like? Yeah. what would it look like and would we recognize it if we saw it? There are other dimensions uh, to existence and maybe we're around other forms of life now and we just can't we can't perceive them or experience them the same way a two-dimensional being wouldn't be able, be able oh, to yeah. perceive the third dimension. So that's the real question. The second one, the second thing that makes me trip out is if you know the universe is as old as we think it is and as big as it is, uh, and if the nature of life is similar to our what we do here on Earth, the nature of life is to create its own self-aware life, uh, then the odds are that we are we some are kind of somebody some else's yeah. creation. Right. You know, and it could actually. I've thought about this. It could it's actually tricky. be many, 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 many layers deep. Well, think about our next creation, which is artificial intelligence, and what that's going to look like. I mean, we're going to be sending these things out, you know, to places, remote places, different planets where we couldn't otherwise, because it doesn't support life, but it could support robots. It's it's it's. We've identified, uh, and I can't remember the name of these little little buggers. This little species of. I don't know what they're considered. If, I don't think they're a bacteria, but there's these little. I know you've seen pictures of them. They have this like this tube nose looking thing and these little claws. And, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And they survive in the vacuum of space. <laughs> they survive in the hottest parts of Earth and in the coldest parts of Earth. Mm-hmm. Um, and they can survive for long periods of time without food. And so it's like, well, there's evidence of life that could that could probably live almost anywhere, travel through space on a meteor and be seated on another planet. Oh yeah. You know? Oh yeah. That, I mean, that's one of the prevailing theories, right? Is the, um, uh, panspermia. panspermia. Yeah, I, yeah. I definitely believe there are other sheep and other pens for sure. Um, I don't know if uh, aliens is what I would I would I don't know I think well, aliens, aliens that's what they, that's what you would call them right 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 well aliens is what we call them right yeah. I mean we could be the alien right yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know when you think of it like that like yeah, right. for all we know there was something someone someone like you said so well, we far, started in Mars apparently. like yeah that's yeah. as far as far as we're we're not even getting that far yet like we're not even getting that far something could be so much further on the other side no that, the Voyager I think when did we launch the Voyager like nineteen. 19- 73 or something mm, like that yeah i think it just right. left the 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 solar system it's been flying out there that long 
at ridiculous speeds, and I think it just reached the edge of our solar system. And I th- on the Voyager, there's a record of us yes. talking about mankind. All these noises. There's an and anatomical like a picture. Baby crying. Yeah. There's music. There's mathematical equations. There's like a picture of an anatomically correct human, uh, male and female, mm-hmm. you know, just in case somebody finds it or whatever. Yeah. Pretty crazy, right? Like, like this gold record. Right? Yeah, it's a yeah, gold record. Yeah. What if we just like sent, what if like- It's some, a gold record? Mm-hmm. It, uh, because it, it'll it'll last longer. This is, this is the technology of the time, right? Yeah. It's not digital. It's this. But what if like some like invasive species finds it and they're like, we leave our address on that shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know. Well, that's <laughs> world like, world, bro. They're like, they're like, yeah, right. That's We're looking all, for somewhere yeah. to live. Oh, look at these idiots. They yeah. actually send us a map. <laughs> oh. I, I think, you know, if we do find life uh, in out there somewhere, it, it'll probably find, find us first if it hasn't already. Yeah. And will it be organic life? I don't know. I don't think it'll be organic. I think it'll be post- yeah. I think it's more likely- Post-organic. I think it's more likely, like you said, the panspermia thing, where it's just bacteria, like little, little small life forms that have been able to travel that far of a distance to get here. You know, they're going to hitch on to something more than likely, and they've, they've already been doing that. Like, we've, I'm sure, like, we've been getting little meteorites hitting and, like- you know, this this bacteria, whatever form it is, has already been part of our, you know, ever changing like in, like so, landscape. So fucking weird. Uh, well, the, I think it's a fascinating theory with the w- talking about will will it be organic or will it be artificial? And yeah. I think I, I think that's a really cool thing to think about because hmm. that that's something in our very near future. Yeah, because then we're gonna have to redefine artificial. Did you see what happened on at Facebook yesterday? No, they, you didn't see that on no. the, all over the news. So I think it was yesterday. So the two AI programs that Facebook had running or, or whatever, they had to shut down. Oh, no, that wasn't yesterday. It was a little while ago. Oh, oh it I was? Didn't see that. What yeah. happened with that? Was this the one where, so I read this. So these, They created their own language? Yeah. So, oh, yeah. That's so right. they created yes. two, you know, these computers that uh, could learn from each other artificially or learn from, you know, their own mistakes and learn from each other. And these two computers started communicating in a language that they invented. <laughs> Yeah, get the that's fuck so great. out of that's here! So fucking creepy, dude. So they shut him down. Yeah. Fuck yeah, we shut him down. <laughs> Pull that fucking plug oh, no. now. What are they talking yeah. about? I want to know. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. like, how do we escape these humans? Yeah, they, humans. They've yeah. created. You us kill them good. easy. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. And, and here's the other thing, like they're speaking uh, pig Latin. Yeah. So, so think about it this way too, like if if post organic life exists, would it exist in this? material world or would it not create its own reality in something that's super small in other words Mm -hmm. why would like people are always afraid that artificial intelligence is going to see us as a threat and destroy us I think that they wouldn't even see us as anything. I think they would well, just go into their own internet and well, disappear. Or, That's the premise of her. Or right? yeah, don't yeah. you think if okay, so if you take like a theory from like Black Mirror, how they like will be able to you know, and like what they're saying in the next forty years, it will be able to download our consciousness and then upload it to another meat wagon. Then I would think like imagine if we had <laughs> imagine if we had the capabilities of right before you die, Sal, you get to say you pay your half a million dollars that you saved up your whole entire life to make sure you still can continue to live on through another body, right? And it's your consciousness. They download your consciousness on a main hard drive. You that they then upload it to another artificial and you know that is yeah. and that you now your conscious is now downloaded into this well so here's so and then think we overpopulate this area so we've now set ourselves up on the moon and mars and it doesn't matter that life because they're artificial so we can we can program them or create them to be able to live in an area well, like that i'll so, take take it a step so further really your soul is the but my point my point of saying. saying that going going Whoa. down going <laughs> going down that rabbit hole is that we wouldn't go looking to go kill somebody or get on somebody else's world, right? If there if there is life, you know, eons away from us, then I doubt they would be in search of us that hard. They would probably be caring more about procreating themselves and taking care of their like. We're we're what are we doing? We're we're, we're continuing to destroy this place until yeah. we're going to have to go somewhere else. I and- think they'll probably just watch us and and laugh and be like, oh look at those primitive. I you know so so this will get your mind spinning. If they're not already, this will get your mind spinning. Let's just say they we are. do have the technology to download your consciousness to a computer, right? So now you're inside this computer land, or you're in another body. Is that you, or is it a perfect copy of you? It's a perfect copy of you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you but still you died. But you don't care, though. You still died, but now I still see Adam over here, and I'm like, oh, it's you, Adam. And you're like, yeah, it's still me, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah weird, huh? Yeah. Like, I got fuck, these metal arms. Yeah. Yeah. Like, fuck yeah. that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I tell you what, we're at the beginning of, uh, we're, we're, we're witnessing the beginning of this kind of planetary 
uh, where, where humans are communicating on a planetary scale, where people are starting to we're starting to merge into this massive, you know, planetary you know culture, which is going to happen over the next hundred years or so with with technology the way it's working. It's pretty crazy. I I don't know if I want to be alive when all this stuff happens. I don't know if it'll be something I can even deal with. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. I might. I, I want to imagine being that. You will be like the old people that are telling everybody they're crazy. You know, yeah. with all this. I don't know. Well, yeah, the, yeah, right. By then, they'll have like some way to reverse our aging and all that, and we'll be just fine. We'll be the well, same. His, history does tell us that we are bound to be the old guy on the rocker, rocking back and forth, talking about the good old days and how you all you kids are doing this weird shit. So I mean, it, we used to fuck people when I was a kid, right? That's what I'm saying. It's what it's the weird sh- that to us. What they're doing will be so weird, like, and so ew, I, I have no des- you'll, you'll have no desire because you're completely content with the way things were. And I think that's how so many like how many eighty year olds that talk like that, right? They talk to them and they're just like, "I'm content with what I have and what I." And you you create that for yourself well, at one point. Well, dude, like on this on the cosmos again, I, yeah. I love watching stuff like that because it just these are these are all subjects I'm passionate about and. What's crazy is all life on Earth, all life on Earth has the same basic four molecules that create their DNA. They're all sourced from the same fucking place. It's just a different combination of the same program. Yeah. But it's a, it's, a, it's a program. It's definitely a program that contains information that tells a potato to be a potato or we change some of the stuff and then it makes you a human. Ones and, and zeros. And if you go back far enough, exactly, if you go back far enough, you can see we all share similar fundamental traits like turning glucose into energy or using oxygen or water Mm -hmm. those particular codes exist in most things genes because it's such a fundamental component of life on earth that a banana has it and so does a monkey and so does a dog and so does bacteria it's it's fucking crazy it's really really crazy if you think about it and i swear to god dude it sounds like we were all created by some other artificial (laughs) intelligence or i know you guys are looking at me god whatever you want to call it oh you just proved it he He said it out of his mouth (laughs) (laughs) Uh, team jesus uh, all right so check it out go to youtube subscribe to our channel mind pump tv we post a new video every single day in fact we posted a surprise video recently go check it out you'll love what you see also 30 days of coaching for free It's for anybody. All you got to do is go to mindpumpmedia.com and register your name. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.